What's crackling codelets? Just a little update here for any of you GORM users. If you are logged into GORM at ide.gorm.io and then you go to your dashboard up here at the top and you are trying to create a new container and you fill out the name and then you put a description in there, some thong. <laughs> that was a typo. Uh, put a description in here and then of course figure out what technology you want to use. Node.js is fine if you're using Node.js projects. And then down here at the bottom, this is the new thing, the additional module package. You can install MySQL right off the bat. You don't have to do any of the installation. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well enable the MySQL-CTL command, especially if you're following along in Colt Steel's MySQL Bootcamp. And then if you're following along in Colt Steel's The Web Developer Bootcamp, you'll want to use the MongoDB. And then you won't need the first two, unless you're taking both of his courses, both Web Developer and MySQL, and then you'll do all three. All right, so if you check all three just for the heck of it, and then you create a new one. This will take a moment because it has to install those extra modules. And then once it installs them, I'll show you how to use them inside of your brand new container here in a moment. If you want to support devsprout.io, then check out this Chrome extension that I created. You can add it to your browser with the click of a button. And then once it's installed, you can go over to udemy.com. And anytime that you're thinking of buying a course, let's say you're just checking a course out, the extension will notice what you're doing and it'll actually redirect you to the same course page, but it'll add my affiliate ID to the URL. So you can see here, it's added my ID to the URL. And now if you do happen to buy that course, I'll make a small commission off of that sale. Okay, now that the container is ready, it'll prompt you to either go to your dashboard or run your container. Let's go ahead and run the container. All right, here's your brand new container. And basically if you want to run MySQL, it's really simple. You just type in mysql-ctl. CLI that'll restart the database if it wasn't started it will just start it and then it'll open up the shell and now you're inside the MySQL shell and so at this point you can create databases you can insert data into them update them delete them etc and then when you want to exit you just type exit and hit enter so that is for opening up MySQL and now the MySQL started at this point so if you want to stop it you can do mysql-ctl stop but just know that once it's started, you don't have to type the full command to get back. You can just type MySQL, hit enter, bam, you're back in the shell. Exit. Now if it gives you an error, then you want to run the full MySQL-CTL CLI command and that will restart it. And just a little tip here, if you ever are working and for whatever reason you get kicked out and you try to restart the shell and it's just not working, then run this command. You're going to do a PKIL, so process kill, dash nine, space, dash EF. MySQL, that'll delete or it'll shut down all existing MySQL processes and then you can start from the beginning with MySQL CTL CLI. Give that a moment and it'll start up the shell. Now you're ready to go. All right, so exiting out of that, that's MySQL. Now if you're wanting to do MongoDB, then you're going to do just the MongoD command and that'll start up the Mongo daemon. Now there is a problem here. It's not using the no journal flag by default. So it is finding the data directory, which is good. But if it doesn't use no journal, then it uses a little bit of extra space and eventually that space will add up and you want to optimize the space that you're using. So control C to exit. And what we can do is right now, if we LS, you'll see we're inside of something unique one, two, three. That's this folder right here. It comes with this main.js file by default. You could delete it if you want to. It's not something that's relevant to any of the courses that you're taking. So rm-rf means remove with recursive force. Never use this command unless you know what you're doing, but you'll do main.js. Always make sure that you put a file name after rm-rf, otherwise it'll recursively delete your file system. And so you delete it, that file disappears. Okay, moving back over to MongoDB. What we wanna do is echo, and then the MongoD command but then we're going to put in dash dash no journal and then put the, wrap that inside of double quotations and then you're going to put the greater than sign and this just means put this what's inside of quotes inside of whatever comes after this greater than sign which is going to be a file called mongod and now hit enter and it creates that mongod file now if you just type mongod it's just going to run the command it's not going to run that file and so if you try to run that file dot forward slash mongod the dot forward slash says, hey, look in the directory that I'm currently in and run MongoD. 
Now it's going to tell you permission, den bleh, permission denied. So what you want to do is change those permissions. So ch mod, all one word, space a plus x, and then you're going to do mongod. And now if you run it again, dot forward slash mongod, what's going to happen is it's going to run the mongod command, but it's going to add the node journal to it so that you're not creating journal files, which will save space in the long run. Okay, great. So with that running, now how do you get into the Mongo shell? You go over to Window, New Terminal Window, and it's going to open up a new terminal window up top here. No, you cannot drag and drop it down. That is not going to work. It's That's how you used to be able to do it in Cloud9. They do not have that functionality in Gorm. So up here in this upper half, you'll type in Mongo without the D at the end, and that opens up the Mongo shell denoted by this greater than sign. And now you can do things like show DBs, and you can create a DB, and you can use a DB, and you can you know insert data into it, etc. So then same thing, if you want to exit, just type exit. And once you've exited Mongo Shell, then you can go down here and control plus C on your keyboard to shut down the Mongo daemon. So that's it for MongoDB and MySQL in your GORM container, just in time, because now there's a jet flying over my house, you won't be able to hear what I'm saying anyway. Thanks a lot, we'll catch you in the next video.